So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about transit priority because this is something that uh, the city has been hot and cold on for many decades. Um, uh, but first of all, I wanted to say something about um, uh, acknowledging Coast Salish territory because I've actually started to think a little bit differently about that because I used to go and uh, one of my favorite things was going with my family to go collect oysters up um, on Vancouver Island, north of Nanaimo. And it's been in the front pages of the newspapers recently that basically all the shellfish are dying off in the Salish Sea uh, because of carbon dioxide pollution. Ocean acidification is the term. And so I actually think that protecting Coast Salish territory, which a lot of Indigenous people say that's everyone's obligation who lives here, is to actually think seriously about what we can do to keep carbon, tar sands, oil, and, th and the like in the ground. Um, so I'm going to start with um, where we came from as a city. Yeah. Uh, as a big city, we, uh, we used to actually be a transit city. Vancouver was one of the very first places in the world that had electric public transit. Um, it was uh, it was in the first handful of cities in North America to have electric streetcars and electric interurban cars, rather than horse-drawn cars or steam-driven cable cars like San Francisco, which was the state of the art a decade before Vancouver got our public transit system. And in the streetcar era, before World War II, only a car was a luxury in Vancouver. Only a car was a luxury in New Westminster. But with the advent of the automobile era, the interurban tracks, streetcar tracks were torn up. Um, and transit was cut back as the city grew. So now in our region, it's pretty much, for much of the region, it's essential to own an automobile to live well, to work, to do all those things. And as a result, um, it, this is all of Canada, about half of our greenhouse gas emissions are from um, transportation. Not all of that's the private automobile, but a really big percentage is. And that's going up as, the tar, as more of our oil comes from the tar sands. And this is, this is another consequence of global warming. Uh, forests in the interior of BC largely look like this now, dead trees, jobs disappearing with the mills uh, catch on fire or close down. And this is what it looks like in the Philippines, where the consequences are a lot more dire. So I want to think about this as a, a little bit as a, for COPE, which is a very progressive organization, think of this as a, as a global issue with really strong local ramifications. Um, and also, local implications in that people have families, people living in Vancouver have families all over the world. And we've actually got some really interesting policy coming out of this party called Vision Vancouver. Um, uh, like really, you know, majority of trips on bike, foot and transit, eliminating dependence on fossil fuels, that's not reducing, it's eliminating. Pretty good words here, cleanest air, great stuff, um, but really what it's, what it's looking at doing is very modest. It's keeping the, the amount of cars driving around about the same and very gradually increasing transit and cycling to, to meet the need. So it's not actually taking the greenest city direction at all, it's taking a mediocre middle of the road direction that doesn't meet the greenest city objectives. Um, yeah, it talks about prior, um, transit priority, but in a very wishy-washy way. Ooh, that barely shows up. Okay, somehow the projector and my computer are not talking the same language about colors today. Um, 
all that shows is just that there are a number of routes that have been proposed for rapid transit or things like bus lanes in the region, um, but there's no talk about that from City Hall. Places like uh, Hastings, in particular, 41st, um, Victoria Drive, all these places we should be moving forward according to the city's own plans. We should be moving forward with transit lanes um, and moving towards true rapid transit. I'm just going to go through something that just to visualize how a space efficient transit is compared to the private automobile. And that translates to how much space we have available if we shift a, a few of the, the drivers into public transit. There's a lot of space out there available, even if it's just a small percentage of the cars off the road. And this is New York City. This is what other green cities are doing that Vancouver is not doing. Getting out a can of red paint and creating rapid transit. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to use the example of Zurich, Switzerland, because Zurich, Switzerland has the highest degree of transit priority of the whole planet. Uh, and their objective is very simple. Transit vehicles never wait for the private automobile. They stop for other transit vehicles, they stop for pedestrians, they may stop for bicycles, but not for the private automobile. And Zurich's not a, you know, not a very radical place in a lot of ways. It's largely thought of as conservative. A lot of bankers there. But the transit is good enough that wealthy bankers actually ride transit when they want to get to a meeting on time. If they want to show off, they may bring their fancy BMW. But if you want to get there on time, you ride transit. <coughs> and it's not, a lot of people think it's all streetcars. A lot of it is actually buses, trolley buses, um, almost exclusively trolley buses in the city. They wouldn't be dealing with um, the fumes of, of diesel buses. And they've got enough ridership to go with the very large buses that you see there, double articulated. Um, and other cities in North America, this is Chicago, not what you would think of as the greenest city, but they're actually going ahead with a plan to to build two major busways across their city. with, And the bus lanes in this are 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the center. Real transit priority, real signal priority so the buses don't have to tr stop for traffic. That's Chicago, not Europe. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about buses just in the context of uh, the love that many people have for um, light rail. Light rail is really nice, it's very smooth, it has a lot of advantages, but what a lot of people don't realize is that in Europe, they never put the pipes where the rails go. They've kept, they kept old streetcar systems and they never put sewer pipes and water pipes and stuff underneath. So they can actually put, lay tracks down, new light rail tracks down where the streetcar tracks were very inexpensively. They don't have to dig up. Here we've messed up a lot of our best corridors. So the trolley bus becomes the option that's affordable if we want a lot of uh, electric powered public transit. Um, <coughs> and I also want to mention the what works for electric transit. There's a lot of silliness in the media these days about battery powered buses that are going to be charged with inductive coils in the pavement and stuff. None of that can be ever be as efficient, even in theory, as the trolley bus already is. And trolley buses are getting better. So uh, electric trains, light rail, trolley buses, those are the ones that are efficient. We've been doing it for 100 years. We're very good at it. We can do a lot more. Um, so I'm going to make a couple, throw up a couple of proposals that I think 
with some wording tweaks, because I just did this right before I left, um, that might uh, be useful at the policy um, uh, conference. And th the first one is basically to just model our transit priority goals after Xerix. Make it so that our goal is that eventually buses never get stuck in traffic. And they never wait at a red light so the cars can go by. Now Zurich has never gotten there, but they get closer and closer every year. And a lot of European cities have bus lines now where you can ride along and go from the, the start of the line all the way to the end and never stop at a red light. And what may happen is that the, the, the driver of the bus may wait for a few seconds extra to stop because the, the, the computerized system is telling them that the light won't be green if they leave. So they'll just leave the doors open for another 12 seconds, close the doors and go, and they don't even stop at the, the lights. And that's, that's not new and fancy. That's being applied all over the world now, except for in, North America, in um, Metro Vancouver. And to advocate for the expanded use of trolley buses across the region. And that's all I've got to say. Eric, Thank you. you get the prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.